Greetings, my brothers and sisters, one more time. This is Brother Milan coming to you again with, uh, with I believe, the third Bible lesson. We have been talking about uh, God's promises to grace age saints. And I chose that topic because that says a whole lot to me. God has made some promises to grace age saints that others did not enjoy. God has made some promises to us that he did not make to Adam. He didn't make them to Abraham. Not these, some of these saints. He did not make them to David. Nor did he make them to Moses. But God came to the point in, on his agenda where he decided that he wasn't going to deal with man according to the law. Because the law, what did the law do? The law condemned. The law was an administration of death. The law could tell you what you should do, what you should not do, but it could not help you in not doing what it forbade you to do. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. We are serving in, under, through God's grace. God is dealing with us according to his grace. Right. And you know God is full of grace. Yes. It's said of Jesus Christ that right. he was full of grace and truth. What God tells us to do or not to do, God comes right back and says, just give me a chance, I'll help you do what you should do. I'll help you in keeping you from doing what you should not do. Now, there's a word I want to add to our lesson for today. We we're talking about uh, God's gracious, God's precious promises to his children. Yes, God has made promises to us. And I said last time, or the time before, God is a promise maker, but he is never a promise breaker. What God promise, promises you that he'll do, he is going to do it. But the word I want to add to the title of the day is God's admonition to us as well as his promises. There's something God asks us not to do because he doesn't want us to interfere with the promises that he has made unto us. And I think we're going to start off on that one this morning. God tells us in his word, this is in the form of an admonition now, quench not the Holy Spirit. That's in 1 Thessalonians 5.19. If you look in 1 Thessalonians 5.19, it will say to you, quench not the Holy Spirit. In other words, there are some things that we can do or maybe not do, and we can stifle the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And we don't want to do that. That's the admonition. I want to ask the question about that. How in the world can you quench the Holy Spirit? Well, I have a few suggestions here. No, well, they're not suggestions. I think these are factual statements. I think I can back them up. That I want to share with you this morning. There are ways we can quench the Holy Spirit. If we try to operate the church apart from the leading, guiding, directing of the Holy Spirit, chances are we can stifle his work. All right. So you know, in some churches, I understand you can't shout. You can't say amen. You better not say hallelujah. And I dare you to say praise the Lord. I think any church that I tell you that you can't shout in this church, you can't say amen, you can't say hallelujah, and you better not say praise the Lord, I believe the spirit is being quenched. Scripture gives us a mandate. Yes. Or scripture uh, admonishes us not to quench the Holy Spirit. Someone read uh, 
Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. If you got it, 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. When I call those scriptures like that, if my brother would just, if you would just turn to them while we're talking here, that sure would help us out a Quench. whole lot. Quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. Yeah. How about that? I'm going to ask this question if, or, would someone, oh, I got one right here. I got a Bible right here. Quench not the spirit. How can you quench the Holy Spirit? Well, let's talk about some things here. When we rely on other ways mm -hmm. that not of the Holy Spirit right. to do ministry, we quench him. Yes. We don't, we refuse to give him his free reign in our lives as we go about to do our daily, weekly, monthly, year, annually meeting of ministries, I believe we can quench the Holy Spirit. When we, number two, when we diminish, diminish his personality and speak of him as an impersonal force, and he is not an impersonal force, he has thoughts, he has a mind. Mm -hmm. He has intelligence. Yes. He has a voice. Mm -hmm. Just like God the Father, he can be hurt. Yes. He can be insulted. All right. When you, how many times have you heard of someone calling the Holy Spirit an it? Oh, when it comes in. He's not an idiot. He's not an impersonal force. He right. is a viable person. Yes. He speaks. Yes. He teaches. Yes. He interprets the word of God unto us. Yes. Thirdly, when we, you know, I'm not going to say this in an ugly way. I want to say it as nice as I can say it. You know, we do have what we call bylaws in our churches. Mm -hmm. We call it constitution, constitution, what was that? Constitution and bylaws. Yes. But even in our constitution and our bylaws, if they go against something that the Holy Spirit has already said, All right. Lord have mercy. We are legislating, we are passing rule, regulation against Him. Yes. No wonder the scripture says, quench not the Holy Spirit. Whenever we create a sanctimonious structure in our corporate gathering and worship services, we sit around and look at everybody else, start at the head, go down to the toes, and, and on our face and in our hearts, sometimes it might be, oh, I'm better than you. I've been a Christian longer than you. God loves me more than he loves you. Oh, right. no, he doesn't. Come on, come on. God loves us all the same. Yes, sir. I might have come from Skid Row. God loved me as much as he loved you, even if you came out of a Christian home. Right. Oh, somebody didn't get what I just said. I said, even if you came out of a Christian home, your mom was a Christian, your dad was a Christian, your brothers and sisters around you were a Christian, but I may have come from Skid Row. God loves me just the same. All right. yes, sir. God loves all of his Children, you know that, don't you? Yes. Scripture does say to us, God, what? So love the world. Mm -hmm. What did he do? He gave his only mm -hmm. begotten son. Yes. That whosoever does what? Mm -hmm. Whosoever believeth in him mm -hmm. should not perish but have everlasting. everlasting life. And the reason I'm looking down right now, some of you kind of get on my case by looking down sometimes while I'm talking. The reason I'm looking down now, I'm looking for a scripture, and I just found it. I'm going to read some of them in a few minutes. Oh, I lost my number. What number was on? Four, five, whatever. Uh, let me read the fifth one then. Whenever we despise prophetic utterances, You've heard someone say, well, I read that in Scripture, and I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. Well, let me just tell you a little secret. If God said it, you better believe it. Well, all right. And just let it go as that. Don't try. You say, well, I don't understand it. Well, don't try to reconcile it to your understanding. If God said it, mm -hmm. 
He means it. Yes, sir. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Whenever we, let me read that one over and finish it up. I didn't finish it, but whenever we diminish his activities that alerts and awakens us to the glorious and great truth that we are the children of God. If you're born again, that if you've been born of above, from above, you're born of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. If Jesus Christ is in your heart today, he's in your life today, and you're in him, don't let nobody fool you. You are a child of God. All right. God loves you just as much as he loved the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to say that one more time. God loves you and I don't know what to say, me or I. God loves you and I just as much as he loves his son. Yes, sir. The Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. In Romans chapter 8, I want to start reading in verse number 15. Matter of fact, I want to read verses 15 and 16. Romans 8. 15 said, For you are for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. All right. Oh, my Lord. But you have received the spirit of adoption, hereby or whereby crying, Abba, Father. All right. All right. Someone put their own free translation on that internet version and said, crying, Daddy, Daddy. I don't see anything wrong with that. The spirit himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. All right. The Holy Spirit. Yes. The Spirit of God. The one whom he has sent to live in each of us bears witness yes. that we are children of God. There's one more verse I want to read. Now I got to find it first. So give me an opportunity. Give me a chance. Now I turn to it. I look for Galatians Chapter 4, verse, I'm going to start reading that verse number 4. I'm looking cross out of here because I'm looking cross at my Bible. In Galatians chapter 4, we're talking about now quenching the Spirit, or uh, putting out the fire of the Spirit, or trying to put out the fire of the Spirit, or put out the uh, admonitions of what He's trying to lead us into. In Galatians chapter 4, Verse number four. It says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent not his son, God sent forth his son, made of a woman. Bear with me here. Right. Made under the law. Right. Why? To redeem them that were under the law. Who was under the law? The Jews were under the law. That we might receive the adoption of Sons. Right. Sons and daughters. Yeah, the Jews were given the law. You say, well, how did that apply to us? Well, although the law was given explicitly, but not exclusively to the Jews in the sense that we all come under God's law. Okay, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Right. God told his people, Thou shalt not steal. Guess what? He's not saying to us Gentiles, okay, but you got to go ahead and steal. Mm -hmm. God told his people, thou shalt not lie. All right. Well, he's not saying to grace age folk, well, it's all right, you got to go ahead and lie. Mm -hmm. See, we came under the power of the law, but we never was, we never were under the law in the sense that God was using the law to teach us and train us what we should and should not do. The law was given to God's people, his chosen people. But the law has no power in it to help you keep it. All right. But all oh, when grace yes, came yes. along. Yes, sir. Thank God for his grace. Yes, now I wanna I wanna I keep hitting this mic, y'all forgive me, okay. I want to read now verse number six. And because you are sons, God had sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart. Yes. Doing what? Crying. Abba, 
father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son and a daughter. And if a son, look at the next part of verse number seven. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ Jesus. Do you know that God has so much in reserve that he may not give us while we are on this side of eternity? God has so much in reserve that he will share with us. He's going to share with us throughout all of eternity. We will spend all of eternity getting to know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Getting to know God the Father. Yes, yes. Some say that, well, I know the Lord now. Well, you don't know him like you're going to know him. All right. I understand the Lord now. You may understand something, but you don't understand everything. Let me read number seven. Ways to quench the Spirit. I'm sure these are not the only ways you can quench the Holy Spirit, but these are some ways. Whenever we suppress mm -hmm. or legislate against or instill fear in the hearts of people mm -hmm. regarding the legitimacy of the Holy Spirit. Like someone say, I know the Lord, I know God, but I don't know about the Holy Spirit. But do you not know that if you are not being led each day by the Holy Spirit, right. you're not being led of God? All right. The Holy Spirit is the one who leads us. Yes. He guides us. Maybe I'm saying the same thing. He teaches us. Yes. He instructs us in the things that are pleasing yes. unto God. Yes. That's why scripture says, don't try to put a damper on the power mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Neither in your life or someone else's life. Right. Let the Spirit do His work. Now, there are some promises in Scripture made concerning heaven. Right. I'm, co I'm coming off the Holy Spirit right now. Concerning heaven. You know, when Jesus' disciples came to him one day after observing John's disciples, how they prayed, how John had taught them to pray, they came to Jesus one day and they said to Jesus, teach us to pray. John taught his disciples how to pray. Now, teach us to pray. And Jesus said to them, I believe I'm in Matthew chapter, let's see, I think I'm in chapter 6. Jesus said unto them, This then is how you pray. What did he start off with? Our Father in heaven. Hallowed, a holy be your name. Your will, your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. So one thing Jesus was teaching his disciples was that when they would pray that they need to recognize the home of our heavenly Father. His home, He resides above the earth. Mm -hmm. He resides above the first heaven as Paul would instruct, even above the second heaven, All right. even into the third heaven. Now, Jesus taught his disciples again this is dealing with heaven and I know you know the Bible doesn't speak as much about heaven as it does about hell 
God hadn't told us everything about heaven. All right. All right. God reserving something. God wants God want that. And that's going to be a surprise to us. We, we have no idea what it's going to be like when we get to heaven. <laughs> Jesus told his disciples one time, he said, listen. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Yes, sir. Believe also in me. Yes. And then he wanted to say, in my Father's house. Yes. Are many rooms. Yes. Many mansions. Mm -hmm. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. Right. And here's what Jesus said to them. I go to do what? To prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. I want to read on that. And if I go in John chapter 14. And if I go. I will come again. Mm -hmm. And receive you to myself. Well. That where I am. Mm -hmm. And you know where Jesus is, don't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you may be also. also. Mm -hmm. And Jesus went on and said, and one of the brothers said, spoke up saying, well, before I get to that verse, Jesus went on and saying, and whether I go, you know. And the way you know. Then one of the brothers spoke up, I believe Brother Thomas spoke up and said, Lord, we want to know. We don't know where you're going. And how can we know the way? Oh, I just love verse number six. Jesus said unto him, I'm, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm adding the word I'm on each one of those. I'm not doing damage here. I'm the light. No man, no person cometh unto the Father but by me. What did the Lord promise us? He promised us a home in heaven. See, God got two classes of people. I'm going to let you chew on that statement just for a few seconds. God got two classes of people. He got his heavenly bound people. He got his earthly bound people. See, the people whom God chose at first to be his own, what John was talking about, he came into his own, his own received him not with the Jews. Those are his earthly people. But God also has a heavenly bound people. That's us. Our home is going to be in heaven. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. I do believe that we're going to be able to transport back and forth. I believe we're coming back with him when he comes the second time right. to set up his kingdom on earth. Yeah. I believe he's going to bring the church back with him. Right. Some will be ruling with him. Yeah. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I don't want to start preaching at you either. just want to share the word with you. You remember John, when he received a vision when he was abandoned to the Isle of Patmos. John said in verse 21 of chapter, y'all gonna hit me with the chapter. Look at verse 21, chapter 21. Look at 21 and 21. You don't have to read it. I've got, find the verse that I want, find the verse. When I read it, then you say, oh, you got it, that's it. John said that he saw a new heaven and a new earth. He said, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there were no more sea. You know where there would be no more separation. Right. Now, if y'all found out where, where I'm reading from, John is either 20, 21, or 21, 21. Anybody see it? I mean, yeah, 
Yeah, I'm saying John. I'm saying John wrote it. That's right, Revelation 21, 21, 21. Mm -hmm. Okay, read it again in context, please. And I saw a new heaven. John said, "I saw a new heaven." Yeah, and a new earth. A new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Right. And there, and there was, was no more sea. No more sea. There was nothing that separated them. And I, John. Saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. Oh, New Jerusalem. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Coming, coming down. Coming down. From God out of the heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen. Prepared as a great bride adored for her husband. Mm -hmm. That's where we're going to spend our time in the New Jerusalem. We're not going to spend time over there in uh, earthly Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. The Jews will. Whether well, it be a new earth, but the Jews will spend time there. But we're going to spend our time. We're going to heaven. All right. I believe we have talked about quenching, not quenching the Holy Spirit. We've talked about heaven, and I think there is one more we're going to talk about before we close this Bible lesson for today. Talk about the love of God to man. And all of you know. You know it backward, probably. Forward, you can say it in your sleep. If you can talk in your sleep. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not do what? Perish. But have everlasting <coughs> life. Yes. Look at what God did. When we were not fit to live mm -hmm. and were not ready to die, right. weren't prepared. Mm -hmm. Scripture says, but God commended, I believe that's in Romans 5 and 8, but God commended his love toward us. In that while we were yet, you said it, sinners, what happened? Christ died for us. Over there in First John, I'm going to just read this scripture now. I'm going to give you some homework. You can go in and find it if you want to. I'm going to just read it. First John. Beloved, Let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. And God knoweth him. Why are we giving this admonition? Let us love one another. Because God is love. In other words, I want to love others as God loved me. God looked beyond my fault. In your fault. Mm -hmm. And he saw my need. He saw your need. He looked beyond them. Right. He looked beyond my fault. Mm -hmm. And what did it say? And saw my need. Mm -hmm. I see more humanitarian things going on today because of this COVID-19. Mm -hmm. I see people helping people. That's all right. I see where people are more patient with one another, mm -hmm. helping to get each other to places they need to go and they can't drive, right. helping to secure that medicine for them. Mm -hmm. I see those things going on. And it's happening, I know it's happening at Greater Peace. I know it's happening in other parts of the city. People helping people. Yes. Remember we were talking this morning about some promises that God has already made to us and those promises that God has made he is going to see that they are fulfilled. Yes. We were also looking at some admonition for instance quench not the Holy Spirit. 
don't try to harness his power for selfish reasons. We thank God for you. We thank God for this Bible study. We thank God for those of you who are listening to the Bible study. We thank God for your prayers. Let us continue to pray one for another. And let us continue to reach out and help each other as we're doing today. God bless you.